Hey guys, this is Dakota. Welcome back for another Happy Homebrew Wednesday. Um, I am drinking on guys right now. My uh, a little bit left in there, but uh, I'm drinking on my first all grain brew. Cheers to that, huh? Really happy with the taste, guys. I think it did turn out. Um, I did dry hop it with whole leaves. Um, I think I'm gonna attach a video to the end of the video, this video, um, of me um, um, racking off my secondary into my bottling because at first that was quite an adventure with all the dry hops and everything with my auto siphon. But I figured out a tip to kind of make it less of a hassle. Nothing got clogged, so I'll probably show that video at the end. But I uh, ended up using Amarillo, Simcoe, and Centennial hops. Um, it's really got a uh, a nice dank uh, uh, tropical fruit, but it's got a nice bitterness to it. I think that's coming from the Simcoe I used. Um, really nice, guys. Um, the only thing, it's a little bit drier, too. I did add half pound of sugar. Um, I <laughs> I did that because Piney, uh, Piney the Elder, their uh, extract brewer, home brew, whatever, uh, all grain brew, both of them, they add a pound of sugar into the brew. Um, what that does, it kind of it lightens the body because 100% of it is fermentable, and also it it dries it dries the beer out a little bit. And uh, when I had the chance to try Piney, um, it was awesome. It was an amazing IPA. But what I liked about it, it had a nice distinct uh, dryness to the bitterness. And I, I believe it was due to the sugar. And I mean, that's why they have it in their homebrew uh, recipes. But anyway, I added half pound sugar to this one. Glad I did into the brew uh, boil because I was off on the numbers. Um, can't remember exactly how much I was off on the numbers, but it was quite a bit. It was like eight points uh, or so, like that. Yeah, I was I was quite off the numbers. Um, it turned out to be in just about six percent alcohol, so it's a nice sessionable. Um, IPA, so definitely enjoying these. Really do like the hop combination I used on that. Um, I really would like to uh, try brewing that again and try to get my numbers more down. And I actually wouldn't mind using the exact same recipe, maybe um, change a little bit of the malts, but uh, the hops, I really do like the hops. It's got a nice um, dryness, a nice spicy uh, dry uh, bitterness to it, and then the fruitiness. It, I don't want to talk too much about it. I, I enjoy it. <laughs> uh, but there's no off flavors. That's what I'm really glad about. Uh, being my first all grain, no off flavors. Um, glad about that. Just fell short of the OG, my uh, gravities. But uh, I figured, you know, do it more often, get my system down, get the gravities, and, you know, I'll be happy with that. Um, so, anyway, anyway, guys, besides that, UPS just left here maybe two, three hours ago. Um, they dropped off some, I guess you would call it beer meal. <laughs> um, I usually do my recipes, I usually just make them myself, just uh, do a little bit of research and throw some stuff together and enter them into this, uh, not beer smith, I want to get that, but uh, a free uh, beer recipe uh, calculator online. Uh, you put all the ingredients and everything and it tells you what water you need, the temps, uh, well, actually, you have to adjust that, but uh, it tells you your bitterness, your color, all that kind of stuff. Kind of like Beersmith, but you have to put more into it. Do a little bit more of your own work. But uh, usually, I create my own recipes extract. Um, this time, since I had a gift card to Northern Brewer, thank you, family, um, I decided to get a kit from Northern Brewer because I never ordered anything from them, and I love their magazines. I love brewing TV. I watch it a lot. Um, so, hey, support them, right? It was a good card, so yeah, why not? Um, first off, I got their uh, this extract version, guys. Really simple, really easy of their dry Irish stout. Um, I was surprised when I opened this. This kit, um, I mean, dry Irish stouts or just Irish stout generally, you really don't have too much to it. But this kit kind of seemed bare to me for being like twenty-five bucks or whatever. But I guess that's not outrageous. Um, I didn't get the yeast, so you know, actually, it's probably not too bad. It's just the shipping kind of sucks because like 12 bucks but it's two day shipping so I don't want to ramble on too much um, anyway guys they included six pounds of their uh, golden malt extract liquid extract um, the part I was surprised on this um, was their steeping grains um, it's only a pound but you know it's a box kit I kind of understand that um, it's 
100% pound of roasted barley. Um, I figured they would throw some crystal maybe in to up it a little bit uh, in the body, um, maybe some care pills for the, the head retention, um, you know, something like that, or maybe some chocolate malt, some coffee malt, something of the sort. This is a pound of roasted barley. So uh, I'm actually thinking about adding a little bit to it. Um, maybe some crystals, some chocolate, coffee, like I mentioned, or maybe maybe some care pills or some oats um, to uh, kind of give it a fuller body and, uh, you know, a little bit more out of it. Maybe some dry malt extract, but I don't know how much I want to add to it, really. Um, it is a very sessionable beer. Uh, by their instructions, it, the original gravity comes out to 1042, um, you know, about 5% beer, give or take. Um, very sessionable beer. I don't want to up it too much. Um, reason is, I am kegging this beer, guys. Super excited. I'm going to show you a little bit more about that here in a second, but totally excited about that. Um, <clears throat> Another one. <laughs> but, uh, cheers, guys. Another thing I want to do with the stout, I'm going to make it a Java stout, coffee stout. Um, there's many, many ways to do that. Uh, many, A couple of you guys had messaged me on Facebook about that. Larmo, Clemens, um, Chad, you know, you guys sent me a few ways how you prefer or you think it would be the best way to do coffee. Um, you know, crushed, uh, crushed coffee grounds into secondary, um, cold brewing, you know, brewing coffee out of the pot, that kind of thing. Um, I actually think my route I'm going to take, because I talked to a couple other home brewers that did it, is I'm going to uh, do cold brew coffee. Um, just put grains in water, let them soak, uh, stir it up a little bit, put them in the fr for 24 hours, then put them in the fridge, get it cold. Uh, drain the coffee grounds out of it. You add water to it if you were going to drink it, but this is going to be kind of like coffee concentrate, uh, and then add it to the brew and taste it and see how you like it. Um, again, a couple different variations to do with that um, and recommendations. Uh, add it to secondary, add it to kegging. Um, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do yet. If you guys have done either of those, please give me some feedback. Um, would you think I should add it to secondary? Uh, I've read a few places, add it the full amount of time in secondary, add it 24 hours before you keg into secondary, add it straight to kegging. Um, I appreciate all of your guys' input and your, your experience that you guys had because, again, I haven't added coffee to a brew yet and I really do enjoy coffee brews, so um, anything you guys show me definitely helps. And uh, yeah, looking forward to that, guys. I'm gonna keg it, super excited. Um, anyway. The last thing I got from Northern Brewer, oh, that also came with two ounces of uh, Cluster Ops. Um, they're just two ounces throw in at 60 minutes, so it's going to be very easily uh, brew day. Um, anyway, also got PBW. Since I am starting to keg, guys, I figured this would be an easy cleaner to uh, go ahead and throw it into the keg and let it soak overnight to get to the bottom where you can't really reach it and to get inside those dip tubes. Um, also, you throw that in the carboy. I got a few residue signs. Uh, rings around it from where dry happening, dry soaking in hot water, all that other stuff still not coming off. I figured picking this up, um, people swear by it, it's supposed to get it spick and span, let it soak overnight, no scrubbing, no anything. So, cheers again guys. Um, so yeah, figured you might as well pick that up, probably eventually going to need it, especially with kegging, clean the carboy and the food kettle and all with it, so good stuff guys. So I did say that I am kegging, so I did get another piece of equipment here within the last week. Um, I got this off Craigslist for, you know, not actually not too bad at all, but I think a good price, I'd say. Um, another one. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to go ahead and show this to you guys really quick. The last part that I needed for kegging my brew. Got my CO2 tank filled. Uh, mess with that a little bit. I uh, force carved some star sand, cleaned the keg, uh, just playing around with it. Um, gonna, you know, sanitize again before I brew, but I figured, you know, it's gonna mess around with it. So I kind of got that dialed down and figured out kind of what I'm gonna do. So next part I needed was my kegerator fridge. Um, again, guys, I picked this up on uh, Craigslist. Really not a bad amount at all. A uh, really good deal. I. I think so. Uh, it's good condition. This is the Frigere. Um, can't remember the model number off the top of my head. Uh, 
kind of dumb thing to remember. But uh, if you guys go on home brew talk and you look at kegerator conversions, this is the fridge that pretty much everybody talks about. So I was pretty glad and lucky that I found it on Craigslist and got it as cheap as I did. But uh, really to convert it to kegerator, guys, uh, these shelves, I didn't have to do any cutting. They all slid out. Um, got a whole bunch of beer in here, guys. Uh, don't hate on the bush. Um, <laughs> nothing wrong with that every now and then. Uh, but it's perfect, guys, because I have enough space here for two uh, uh, ball like kegs, pony kegs, whatever. So one will fit there, one will fit here, and then my CO2 tank will fit, my five pound CO2 tank and regulator fit right up there. Perfect. Uh, don't have to do any drilling, any cutting of the sort. Um, it's pretty much a ready to go kegerator. I just took those shelves off, all those shelves. The top freezer was uh, really not hard to get out either. There's a couple of screws and it slid out because the actual freezer part is up in here with the, uh, the coolant. It's not one of those little metal trays. It's actually just that. So uh, yeah, guys, if you guys are looking for a, uh, a fridge to start kegging and don't want to do too much maintenance or just lucky enough to find them, um, message me and I can give you the model number right off. I don't have it on top of my hand. I don't want to find the fridge. But uh, yeah, also I got this little uh, dry erase board, uh, Java Stout. <laughs> That's what's eventually going to be in there. I'm probably going to think of a little bit more creative of a name to put on that. But, you know, there it is for now. Nothing wrong with that. So, super excited for that, guys. Um, Really excited, actually. Um, this weekend, I don't know for sure if Chad is going to brew himself. He's still on the fence of brewing. Going to try to talk into it, Chad. So if you're watching, you should brew. Uh, he was thinking about brewing an American brown ale, which uh, I do like browns. They're not typically my most favorite type of beer, but I think uh, I think it would be a good change-up for all the IPAs and American pale ales that we've been doing. I'm doing a stout. He did a brown ale. You know, kind of like a nice medium, nice balance. Um, but I got a, uh, a patio out here, right behind me actually. Um, I think that's where we're going to be brewing. Uh, looking forward to it. So hopefully Chad, you're watching. Hopefully you're going to brew with me. If not, hopefully you still come over. Uh, you know, talk beer, talk homebrew, talk football. Um, gotta say it guys. Uh, tonight's Monday. Uh, doing this video before we got to the bar with a couple friends, watch the game. Uh, I'm going to say go Irish, guys, if you, any of you Notre Dame fans are watching. Um, Notre Dame really isn't my big team for football. My team is Ohio State. Um, I, I live in Ohio. <laughs> it's going to be Ohio State. Um, but I feel uh, Notre Dame's kind of like a Cinderella story, especially this season going 12-0. and um, <laughs> If they can pull it off against Alabama, Alabama, you know, more power to them. Awesome, awesome end to a... Uh, Pretty much a dynasty story, but uh, it would be really cool. Irish one, so hey, go Irish. Huh? That's about it, guys. Um, looking forward to Brew Day. Probably gonna do a video of that. Uh, hopefully, Chad comes do a video. He'll do a video too of Brew Day. Um, really had a lot of fun with that the last one we did, uh, so hopefully, he comes to this one. Um, if not, just come over and shoot the shit. You know, might have actually a couple other uh, people interested in home brewing. Uh, they might actually stop by and see the whole process. So, getting some more people into brewing, guys, uh, not a bad thing at all. Uh, quick question for all of you that do keg. Um, I was thinking about doing the, um, not the force car, well, force carbon, I guess you would say, not to set it and forget it. Um, I didn't want to necessarily shake the keg, uh, get it cold and shake it. <coughs> Another bird, guys. Um, what I wanted to do, I was thinking, of, I was reading a couple things at Homebrew Talk. People do it a million different ways. I was going to set the PSI, get it nice and get the keg nice and cold, um, set it to 30 PSI for 24 hours. They say 24 to 36 hours. I was going to say, you know, 24. Let's do it from a day. And then um, from there, degas the, uh, the keg and then uh, set it to 12 PSI, which I'm guessing will be my uh, serving pressure. Or another one. Uh, <laughs> and leave it to. Uh, that 12 PSI for a week and you know probably have a few beers here and there because that 30 PSI should carve it up a little bit. Um, let me know if you guys think that's a good route to take. That's what I'm going to try my first route. Um, let me know if you guys do something different. If you guys set the 30 for 
36 hours or you do 40 PSI, which is kind of high, but uh, mostly what I read was do 30 PSI for 24 hours and then set it back down to 10 or 12. And I'm going to set it down to 12. So uh, let me know, guys. Let me know if you have a good experience shaking the keg. Didn't know how to take that route. Um, figured my, the beard might agitate a little bit too much, but I definitely do videos of that so everybody can see that and kind of learn from. Hopefully, I don't have any mistakes, <laughs> too bad of mistakes, but if I do, hopefully, you guys learn from them. So, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, more beer review videos to come up because I did, me and Chad did a few a while back and I uh, just haven't posted them because of the holidays. So, I'm definitely going to post them throughout this week. So, thanks for watching, guys. Cheers. Happy Homebrew Wednesday. Good stuff. What's up, guys? Uh, <laughs> today is bottling day. I thought I'd do a quick video on the next Homebrew Wednesday. What's going on? It was our Christmas a little early, but uh, anyway, I forgot to show you guys what I had to end up doing. Uh, this is my least favorite day of brewing. If anybody has ever asked me that, this is definitely, I hate bottling, so definitely looking forward to kegging. Um, but with the leaf hops, uh, I figured that it was going to clog. I don't know if you can see a couple of leaf hops down in there. My reflection might be hard to see. But I used my fine mesh bag and put my auto siphon right inside of it. I don't know if you can see that. And so far, I mean, it's gone through how much? Just about three gallons and no clog so far. And everything's pretty clear. I don't know if you guys can see that. Pretty clear so far. So, smells great. Haven't tasted it yet, but about to. Um, figure I'd just do a quick video, show you guys how the dry hopping went and how bottling off of that. Yeah. Um, so guys, everything's going well. Um, I would definitely recommend putting a bag over your auto siphon. So uh, yeah, it doesn't get clogged. And so far it's working, you know, awesome. You can see how it's going down. It's filling up, losing some liquid to the dry hops, but it looks good. A uh, new guy to show you guys, Harley. Uh, the mess we got, we just did a little bit of Christmas here early. So we're going home. Hey buddy, that's Harley. He just had a few Christmas presents, so you can see uh, he enjoys them big time. <laughs> so, yeah, I just want to show a clip of that. But anyway, guys, um, bottling's going good. It dropped down to, it drops down. I'll show this quick before I got to tip that. Drop down to, Damn it, down, down to like 10.07. So uh, I gotta calculate the numbers there, but the yeast really took off on this one. So uh, I gotta tilt this a little bit. Another pane of bottling. Then I get to see how fun it's gonna be to get the dry hops out of here once I get this all drained off. But uh, so it's looking like, guys, I'm gonna get just about a little over four gallons. So those dry hops did take quite a bit and then the whole fermentation process. So losing quite a bit, so it kind of sucks, but hopefully it turns out good. But uh, yeah, this is it for this, guys. I just wanna show a quick video of that and definitely use a bag if you got them. All right, see you guys.